should be wired up towards the centre pocket. So this is a soft screw shot? Soft screw shot off the yellow, yeah. Mm -hmm. me, me, slow to, not soft, just slow, like that, yeah. That's a good shot. So he's, well, Steve's obviously got to be thinking about retrieving the red from this, uh, from this position. He's got a couple of options. He's just played to push the white down there. That's quite nice. If he plays this shot well, he can push the white behind the spot. Mm -hmm. Good canter contact on the red will uh, will push that towards the pocket and he's back in business. Does require good contact there though. Just got in behind the red a little bit there. He's, the yellow is perfect but uh, getting in behind the red there meant he has to uh, screw in off that which he's done beautifully. With yeah, soft great screw. control. Beautiful soft screw with running side there into an, an open pocket. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, nice, nice position. So is this looking for a full ball contact on the yellow? Could be playing this up the top cushion. No. That's worked out alright. He's got both balls in front of him and mm -hmm. uh, skinny cannon to continue on. under that one a little bit. He'll have to go in off this red now. And he shouldn't have any difficulty with this. Just raising the butt a bit strong right hand side. And bring it up for another drop cannon. Yep, yep. So this is a little bit less risk in this type of shorter uh, drop cannon here, Paul, because uh, the three balls are... Uh, if he'd gone on the other side of the yellow, there would have been less risk of a, of a mm -hmm. smother, but he's actually played on the outside of the yellow to leave the two balls in front of him. This needs to play a couple of slow cannons here. That's nice. Back and forth across the balls, and eventually he'll work them into a position where he can get the red moving towards the, um, towards the corner. Mm -hmm. Just go across the face of these again, and possibly one more time. Pretty little sequence this. Looks easy, but believe me, it's not. Strong check side here to make the red travel. Yep. So now he's got the two of them ahead of him, mm -hmm. and he's able to manoeuvre the red into the position he wants it. Yep. Yeah, so another couple of, one or two more close cannons here, and then there we go. Uh, yeah, that's nice. One more cannon here, and we'll push the red over the corner. Mm -hmm. So he's actually handled that. Beautifully, that, that little sequence. Uh, quite tricky, those ones where you just have to play three or four cannons to, to get the balls into position, and uh, it's quite easy to make a, a mess of it, but he's handled that one well. His immediate instinct here, I think, is to pop this red and screw back for some more pot reds off the spot, but I think he might be better off just uh, popping this in and playing across the mm. So he's tried to get a position where he can play the cannon going through the yellow to yeah, the red? tried to stun up for that cannon, but he's left them too straight. The run through is definitely on, and uh, this is where your pace control comes in. It's possible to... Oh. Never mind the pace, how about the accuracy? And he's got lucky there. He's... Um, yeah, he's... Uh, that's th those balls have finished nothing like uh, what Steve played for, but uh, it's actually a very good position for him. Mm -hmm. Just had the um, white ball cleaned, which may indicate that he got a kick on that run through. Anyway, he's, he's retrieved the position and um, got them back in, in good shape. So he'll try to get to the other side of the yellow so he can play the cannon from that side? Not necessarily immediately. So what, what he's... Uh, what he's done there is just leave himself where he's a bit too straight, I think. He would prefer to have a bit more angle so that he could work his ball off the top cushion and then uh, behind for a cannon, but I think he's a bit too straight for that, so we'll just have to wait and see what he decides to do. Uh, 
stunned it back, which was the right idea, but caught the uh, caught the yellow a bit too heavy. Doesn't matter. This is all entirely manageable. Mm -hmm. Eighty three to go for Steve here. He's uh, be fair to say that he really hasn't brought his best form uh, to the table today. Made a nice. 170 in the middle session, but uh, apart from that, he, he just hasn't been the Steve Messer that we saw earlier in the week, or particularly yesterday when he made a beautiful 305 and a, two other double centuries as well. Mm -hmm. But it's also fair to say that Matthew hasn't shown us anything like the form that, uh, that he's capable of as, as well. And you put that down to the conditions? Oh, look, the conditions definitely play a part uh, Paul, but, but, but these aren't bad conditions. These are good conditions, right? Um, they're not perfect conditions, but uh, you know they're a lot better than you would get in uh, some other parts of Australia and other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I think fatigue is definitely a factor. These guys have been playing now for 12 days in a row. Um, they had you know three, four days of the snooker tournament, five days of the Australian Open. This is now the fourth or fifth day of, uh, of this tournament, and um, you know they've generally speaking been playing you know matches two three matches every day um it's tough it's a it's tough physically and it's tough mentally mm -hmm. beautiful drop cannon by steve there and he's got them exactly where he wants them on a plate only five to go So in this cannon, are we trying to get to the far side of the yellow? Just take this one off the top cushion. And yeah, that's lovely. He just got on the inside of the yellow a bit, and not only did he move it off the top cushion, he actually moved it back towards the spot. Very good, you know, controlled shot that to, mm -hmm. to take, you know, the slight risk of of, uh, of missing, but the reward of, uh, of moving it right back towards the centre of the table was worth that slight risk. Played that beautifully. So again, we're trying to come from behind the yellow. I'm not sure that he's quite got that angle. Yeah, so he, oh my God. He didn't quite have the angle there, Paul. So what he was trying to do was pop the red and stun back to improve his angle on the uh, uh, on the red. That's a, a shot that Robbie Faldari was uh, was famous for. Uh, but he hasn't, he hasn't quite got that right. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul, thanks very much for sitting in in, uh, in commentary there. It's been uh, a great pleasure to have you and we're now going to have a double change in the commentary team because uh, Peter Tankard is uh, is coming in and he'll be joined by, um, by Neil Bolton. Thanks Paul. you and I. Thank Both you Dave, thank you Paul. Nervous. Another tricky little thing off here. Yeah. Mm. Everybody's, Everybody's nervous. nervous. <laughs> Hopefully the referee won't start shaking as she's put in the red. She's done a fantastic job, Kim. And uh, Steve looks settled there. Oh, oh that's a mad lash. Shoulder movement there. And red go, oh no. Where's he going to land? Yeah, both uh, a few little, uh, not rash shots, maybe that was, but um, a few little shots that would normally get. Steve looked very settled in it there at uh, the top. And, uh, not really. He struck this nicely. It's just dry enough. So uh, do you think the table slowed up? Definitely, I think um, sitting here watching carefully uh, like a bowling green, uh, all of a sudden just a couple of rolls less than it was and it doesn't take much to uh, to um, alter things for the players you know they get into a groove hitting the ball the same pace spinning long Jenny big shot this 
beautifully played. I would say that was the shot of this session so far because yes. um, he Not really couldn't afford judge. to keep missing. And he's just got to settle here. If he can knock in a hundred back, um, you know, Steve's no better off than he was. So Matt has to use the jaw here to pop the white back out into the middle. Yeah, just be laying it gently. Oh, it sprung, didn't it? It did. <coughs> I didn't think it was going that far. No, Matt's body language says that uh, he thought that that was a, a hot cushion. Let's see whether that cannon's there as a natural. Okay. I um, had to force it a little. Unlike him to work, belt them when he, he squibbed the long loser then. Mm. Yeah, a bit of a shake of the, the head, but... Um, mm. Has he uh, always been a demonstrative player? You know what he's thinking, you know what he's feeling? by his face and his uh, character, his demeanour? Certainly, uh, he plays with emotion, Matty. There's no doubt about that. And uh, I guess you see that in all sports and different you do. sports. OK, opportunity here, push the wide up there. Now he's got a good Does look. Does he have to cross the red over here? To the opposite uh, side, or can he hold them on this side? I think he'll probably hold it here because the, he's up close to the top. So, um, yeah, it's just about bringing them together here. That's nice. That's nice. Now he splits them apart, and yeah. white goes towards the uh, back of the spot, red goes towards the pocket. Yep, that's the way. Time now is to uh, not take any risk getting that extension there. Often you see guys stretch and think they'll be right if they do it quickly and they miss it. And these are delicate. You've got to hit these right. You hit them too hard, you can lose your red position. Okay. Yep, well played. Both players uh, started very uh, nervously in this final session, Peter. They both missed mm. shots at the start. But just shows the pressure out there. E even when you think, oh, that's a big lead, but Matthew has utmost respect that Steve's good enough to still win the match from here. It's also a matter of personal pride. I think Matt always likes to perform at his best in this championship. It feels like it's his home, yeah. home tournament and home office. It's like Definitely. There's nothing he'd love more than to make a big break for the for supporters and, and all the few billion players that are here watching today and uh, but you know it's not always there and uh, I stated earlier he didn't think that they'd see a thousand break the way things have been going but still got time still got time an hour and 18 yep That there's an opportunity there, just to how important you have to be a good pot. You know, that was a risk shot, but it's a yes. get in shot. If you get it screwed back like that, this next one, suddenly you've got them right where you want them. And uh, the great video players around the world uh, that play top of the table are all exceptionally good potters. Yes. How many hours a day was Matt practicing to get this good? Oh, look, um, every spare minute he could get a leaf pass and wasn't working. <laughs> um, as a professional snooker player, when he is home, and he's spent a lot of time in England, obviously, of late, but uh, he practices a, a good six hours a day. and. Uh, more recently to relax he's been going and rolling the lawn bowl after he's had a good long practice which i think has been great for him it's um you can never relax enough you know matt, matt feels the pressure as good as uh, everybody sees him uh, no one knows him better than me and you know he, he puts a lot of pressure on himself to achieve 
and he'll be disappointed if he can't knock in a 500 in the mm. final for, for his supporters sake. Mm. So yeah, practice, I can, I can tell you that the, his practice has made me have to work an extra 10 years because of my electricity bill. <laughs> practice is in my home. <laughs> Is he uh, still enthusiastic about uh, the snooker tour? Yes, he is. He's, uh, I think he's had a lot on his mind about it mm. and trying to make some decisions. Uh, you know, have been a bit tricky. You know, and I sort of encouraged him any decision's a good decision, but the opportunity's there and go out there for the next 12 months and enjoy it. Uh, you may or may not ever get it again, so just enjoy yes. it. August will be a telling month. He's got three qualifiers in one trip, which is great. It's only one hair fair in 10 yes, days. Yes. And uh, then he's got a, a big Paul Hunter Memorial Tournament in Germany, which I was lucky enough to go and watch him in last year. When's that on? Um, that's on uh, towards the end of August. So I think then he'll reassess. I, I have heard him say to uh, Rob Hall the other day that he does intend to play in the World Billiards in Leeds this year, which is fantastic because he didn't play last year or last couple. So while we're having a chat, he's ticked up 70 already here. And looking to be in good shape. So do you think the travel schedule has affected his play or do you think that uh, they're just a bit too good over there or what's the story? I think that um, Neil Robinson got it right. You've got to go and live in England. Mm. You've got to play on those tables seven days and nights a week and you've got to play with the best players and Matthew's found that extremely frustrating. Um, mm. There's not much competition playing his old man and giving me 50 start. You don't exactly call that tough practice and that's literally what he has to do here whereas when he's living over there he went for a six week stint lived in Leeds, played with um, four professional players out of Leeds uh, mm. who have been fantastic friends to him and so has the Leeds club there, the Northern Centre, the Northern Snooker Centre, they've been brilliant to Matt, made him part of the family you still are, haven't got your family and your wife and your little boy to see you and you go home to each mm. night, so you know. Um, so B has must have found it challenging as well this yeah, year. Wife. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, probably the most laid-back female on the planet is Bea, and um, she need to be married to Matthew. Whoop! Don't know what, what happened was then. That? What was that? What's happening there? I don't know. We must have missed. Mr. Mr. Cannon or something. Yeah, it must have, must have nicked the white on. No, oh, it must have nicked, must have the, nicked white. the white on the way through. It's our old eyes, Peter. Yes, that's right. That's Speak for yourself, Dan. Yeah. So look, he'll reassess it uh, after that. If he, you know, if he could just win uh, even one of those three qualifiers and get a step further. Is uh, he the only there. player on tour that's travelling from a home base outside the UK to compete? Yes. Yeah. And and such a distant home base. Absolutely. The time difference. He, when he went over for the World Championships... He, wow, that's a nice position, isn't it? He, uh, is that white sitting in the spot? I think it is. Uh, I think it's to the side. I think you'll be pretty happy with this. No, it's He's sitting in the spot. Ah, oh, it is. Um, oh, no, it's not. Yeah. Um, Just sorry to interrupt. That's right. He's played that position, not, not being sure whether the red's spotted, so... So it's uh, wise to be on the half ball cross, lose the line, and then you've got your choice of shots. You can just come down and play the cannon. Yep. Or sometimes you, uh, you'll you have to uh, pot a couple of reds to get high of that half ball line to drop yep. down onto the cannon. And you see that little shot there again, as I've mentioned a few times, just getting the balls close together. Just makes it so much easier. 97, pot red for another century. You know, I think the difference um, here, uh, when Matt got up here, he's punished Steve far more than Steve's punished Matt. Absolutely. He's been able to just keep it simple and effective. Um, Steve's got himself into a few scratchy little situations and uh, he's paid the price. That's a glorious shot. Yeah. Just controlling the pace on that route.
finger marks on the table. He's very guilty of that. Now I'm the mug that always brushes the nines at the table. But I'm always growling at him about that. That was a bad one. It looked a little loose. I don't know what he was trying to do there. Maybe get a little more of the red and push it Move over the, the shoulder as he cued, as they've both done once or twice. So red cushion white here. Yeah, a little bit of danger here. You don't want to slip behind this. He's played it well. <coughs> the standard of pro snooker, Peter, you know, um, it's never been better no. than it is at the moment. The money's Absolutely. lucrative and you are seeing countries like China producing outstanding champions of this future these kids over there Matthew says they're amazing and they're playing 10 hours a day oh what's he done well they've got these academies they've, they've designated a, uh, a, a, a mid-sized regional town in China as uh, as a, the uh, snooker hub and um, and the snooker the snooker technology hub I think it is or snooker and Q sports technology hub and uh, they're developing uh, players and tables and facilities there to, uh, uh, to, to be the best in the world. Mm. I had a friend who visited uh, the Beijing Snooker Academy and he said that they had um, a computer system set up on the table that scanned and read the position of the balls and then, according to a preset formula... Always looped it, by golly. It then highlighted with lights an area of the table that you had to get your cue ball into. And when you got your cue ball into that, then the computer screen that sat on, on top of the light um, showed balloons and cheers and explosions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how they're teaching them. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, we're going through a um, fantastic time for the game, aren't we? We had the pop black series years ago on that but th this is uh, just amazing and yeah, it's, um, a, it's another level of technology yeah and uh, I think that interaction between oh this is a clever clever shot oh, oh how a good a shot, shot is that how a good a shot, shot is that fantastic shot. Yes. I wouldn't like to count how many cushions both balls <laughs> touched there. And he's, he's left them. And they, avoid, they avoided, <laughs> avoided kissing each other. Each other. That it's like a chicane. I think that. Oh, Steve's oh. out of frustration. Oh, nearly. Oh, nearly. <laughs> yes, that would have hurt Steve big time. He wouldn't yes. have been expecting a double walk out of there. So, an hour and seven minutes left. Is it theoretically possible for Steve to rattle up enough to win at this stage, or can we now? Um, well, put it this way, uh, Maddie made an 8:31. It took about 55 minutes. So, yes, it's theoretically possible. Yeah. Theoretically, it would be a personal best for Steve. Yes. To do it. Yes. Um, I don't particularly think he's shown enough form and really good careful mm. ball control to do it now mm. um, however while there's physically enough time it's hard to do it it's hard to do it in his current position sitting in the chair isn't it yeah I mean if Matt makes something out of this then it's oh, a little line then up. we're prepared to call it yeah, if he can uh, get out of this, it's a little bit tricky here, but they're just starting to slow up. It may be getting dampy. You don't want to slide around the back so of this. So fine with screw? Yeah. Okay, now, now another little run through. You know, this it's, is, this it's is where it gets very tricky when the table's slowed down, isn't it? These run throughs become yeah, uh, much more difficult. You have right. to end up belting them. And you can get them, but you mightn't get the position. He's played yes. that weight beautifully to he make has. sure he's got on the red. And I think he's he may have an option the here as well. too. Yeah. And now, it's, you know, if what's going through his mind is keep the game simple. Yes. And I've won my 16th title, just keep it simple. Um, I can tell you that the amount of respect he has for Steve as a pity player. Um, no, Matt doesn't walk into this match thinking he's uh, a lay down Mazze or anything. Mm. He, he, he's been very wary of Steve's form and Steve. Matthew's lack of form 
yeah, for his level. Steve's been, well, for his level. I mean, fair to say that the golf has narrowed this year, I think, between the two of them. Yes. With Matt being off at the snooker and, and Steve finding new joy in, in playing billiards. It's, uh, yep. And I think had Steve brought a little form here, he might have uh, given Matthew a bit of a hurry along. This is a tricky one, but he's got it. And, and lucky he'll take that every take day that, of the week, yep. I think. He played himself out of position there, but again, I think this table's slowing. Um, definitely the ball's pulling up. Which has been typical all week. Oh, this is a problem. There we go again. It's time of day onwards. It's quite cool in there. Mm. And uh, it doesn't take a lot to change the conditions. These guys are so fine-tuned. Mm. The use of side on the ball, um, far more so in billiards and snooker, is just crucial. And that, that effect of the side just changes a little bit. Mm. And suddenly the next shot's harder instead of being easier. That was a good shot. The long loser, they haven't played, I reckon we count on one hand how many long losers they've played yes. in the whole match. Players will generally avoid it because they know yeah. it's, a, it's a, not a sure thing. And he's got it over onto this side of the table, he could play the cannon here. He might play for top here, we'll see. Try and put the white up. Behind, behind the spot? Behind the spot. Gently onto the red and then pop the red, let's see. Okay. Certainly what he's tried for. Yep. about position this shot because um, he shouldn't miss the pot, that sort of thing. He played to leave himself in off white, but I think he's going to have to force it here. It's going to be a bit of a forcer. Um, I think from the angle he's going to end up near the red, putting the white near the red. Yeah. He's looking to see whether he can get it away from the red for the drop cannon, but I think that angle puts him back on the red line. Yeah, there we yeah, go. There it is. And that's exactly what I mean. Am I a good judge? Look at that. Hit the Absolutely, <laughs> and I thought it looked a bit tricky. Yeah. And, you know, when that does get a bit slow and damp, that's exactly when you've got to crack yep. those harder than you think. Yes. You just don't quite get the liveliness with the contact. So, uh, you know, a steady break by Matthew and... Uh, just just by bits putting it out of Steve re Steve's reach, isn't he? Yeah. It's not Yes. Um, I thought the ghost just appeared at the window well, that's there, right. we just I'm, had, I'm had sure Matthew I'm stickies. imagining things. <laughs> Couldn't possibly we were watching him on TV a second ago and his face just appeared at the window uh, in, in said, agony complaining about... Uh, did he say, hi dad, I love you? Or, uh, uh, no, I think he, he, he only wanted to talk to you about how the cloth was. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, one of them is having a uh, powder break, so... Uh, Kim, the referee, who's done an outstanding job, uh, gets to have a bit of breathing space herself. Mm. Where they get their energy from, it's just been amazing, the uh, hard work that the referees have put in. Oh, it's a, it's a thankless task. Yeah, absolutely. It's a thankless task. So we're looking on screen at uh, Praveen Chandra, who's uh, uh, an Indian, uh, Fijian born uh, Indian speaker and um, a very competent referee. Very quietly spoken and uh, uh, has very good uh, positioning around the table, never in your line of sight. And it's a real art refereeing billiards. Um, obviously, refereeing snook is not easy either, but um, billiards, you're on the go. Hmm. All the time, you get two top video players playing top of the mm -hmm. table, and they're flowing. And um, you don't want to be putting the red on the spot and slipping it with your finger. And mm -hmm. 
they expect the balls to be ready by the time they get to the table. And, um, it's, it's ongoing concentration. We're looking at uh, the Yarraville honour board with a picture of uh, the great Lance panel underneath. Uh, this snooker event used to be called the Lance panel, but um, they've now reserved that name for the Yarraville Club Championship. And um, there he is with his cue mounted on the wall there. He's uh, a living legend uh, within this club. Steve adjusting the wardrobe. And uh, we're joined in commentary by uh, Grant Meadley, who's going to uh, fill in for me. We might leave Neil in the chair a little bit longer. I think it's fascinating to hear <laughs> Dad's view about what's going on here. I, I think my nerves are a bit better sitting in the chair here. Well, so you reported you couldn't watch the first session, and uh, now you've uh, yeah. now you found your uh, your home here in the commentary, uh, where you can have a bit of a chat and, yeah. and you're a bit more relaxed. So yeah, good for absolutely. You. So I'll take myself out and put Grant in the chair. Oh, I Thanks, can bite Neil. Grant's fingernails instead of mine. I might have got none left. Cheers, Thanks, mate. Peter. Great to have a chat. Welcome back, Grant. Good night, Neil. But you're uh, enjoying this little session. It's uh, Steve had a little mini comeback there, but uh, he broke down early on one of his big breaks. And uh, yes, I s I've sat here seeing conditions changing again, without doubt. And um, by the emotions of the players, I think uh, that's exactly what's happening in there, which has happened every day, Grant, hasn't it? The middle sessions are the ones you want to be playing. Yeah, we, we definitely noticed that outside. There was a few comments the last uh, couple of shots there. The boys have really had to force the ball in and out of Bork, and they're just not yes. coming out of Bork. There's a classic. Look yeah. at no, no side on that white by the time no. they got up there. No. It wasn't that difficult at all if the, if the t conditions were nice and warm and uh, that would have broken, but that loses all its um, the grip. We're well aware that uh, the, the last session the table would slow down. Michael yes. Pearson and myself, we we actually brushed, patted the table twice and gave the table a good iron, but uh, try and keep the conditions as good as possible for the final session. But yeah. as we've seen, it you know it, it's tough to yeah. to battle what what nature's doing. Yep, absolutely. And look, it's just the the players know it, and they yeah. know they have to adapt. And yeah. uh, you know, the simpler they keep it, the better. The, the problem comes when you're trying to impart side and expecting balls to grip for little tricky and offs. So you've got to be playing well enough that you're not leaving yourself those shots. Yeah, I think it comes back down to uh, keeping it simple again. Yeah, definitely. Simple billiards, push it right over the pocket, play the simple in offs. Definitely. So Matt's got a, a sizable lead here. We've only an hour left. Um, I'm sure he'd uh, still like to knock in one big break before the end of this, the, the match. But it's going to be difficult in these conditions to uh, have any size of a break, I dare say. Yeah. I'm not calling it yet. While there's physically time, things can happen. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's highly unlikely that Steve can come back from here. However, there is enough time on the clock. There is enough time on the clock. It, it's uh, just less than, what are we looking at, 700 points there. And um, he yeah, has plenty of time to score 700 at top of the table, obviously. Uh, open play would be a bit difficult, but uh, you know we know that Steve, when he gets going at top of the table, is quite quick. But he's not at the table at the moment, so he's uh, got it all against him. Yep. And it's interesting, I've watched Steve in this tournament literally fly around the table, yep. making double centuries and everything. And today he hasn't. No. been prepared to play at that speed and um, there's been opportunities there where he's um, had the opportunity to get into a really good fast rhythm and he's just doubted himself a little bit to do it I think. Yeah. It's a shame because that's obviously how he's practiced and trained for this tournament but playing Matthew, the pressure of it all, he's, he slowed his pace down and I think that suited Matt. 
Yeah, we, we saw Steve about 15 minutes ago. He was on a sizable break there and he missed an easy pot red, but he did yeah. seem to, to get his stride a bit and uh, he was flying around a table and mm. that's when he plays his best, when he's not feathering the ball and, and second-guessing himself and uh, unfortunately missed an easy red and uh, let Matthew in again. Yeah, real trouble here for Steve. Yeah. Matty looks like he's just about got him where he wants him here. Yeah. Yes, and... Um, really this break here if he goes on with it which he should from here he, he knows um, this is a time to put the nails in and uh, if he's ever going to make a big one th this is when he'll be saying to himself now's the time to do it yeah yeah i noticed matthew had a quick look at the clock uh, about five minutes ago just before i joined in the commentary and uh yeah i dare say look he is thinking about what he can make in the last hour. Yeah. They both started nervously. You they know, did, yeah. The session. So Matthew still respected that Steve was right in the match. That's a nice clear vision, isn't it? Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. You can see what the cue ball's doing, what he's playing the ball with side or no side. See how thin he's getting on top as well. Yeah. I must be getting old. <laughs> so you see a lot of these shots at the top of the table. He'll be playing with sides. A touch of the left-hand side here. There we are. You can see the rotation of the ball. And over a longer distance, when the table gets damp, that slide wears off quicker. It does, so yeah. Yep, definitely does. This is the place you want to be, just keeping it simple up here. So playing this with a touch of the right-hand side, project the, his ball towards the the good side of the opponent's ball. Avoid the smother. Starting to see a uh, increase in his pace. Yeah. I'll He's starting to really flow yeah. now. He's sniffing it, thinking this is exactly where I wanted him to yeah. be, up here, and I'm going to really try and put this to bed now. It almost becomes a second nature when, when Matthew's at top here. It's uh, it's it's also it's almost natural instinct. He, he gets the balls to top and... Uh, it's almost hypnotic, I suppose. Yeah. When you play that much top and, and at this level, it's uh, it, it definitely becomes a natural habit to play quick and, and not overthink what you're doing. Absolutely. And I think um, uh, poor Steve may have overthought things a little bit. Yeah. Um, and that's understandable, gosh. Um, you're playing a guy that's won 15 Australian titles. You're not going to go out there and play as though you're walking around the billiard room. So, Dave, it's a bad one. It's a bad one. Lost the red. The thing is, too, I, you know, Matthew didn't start off that well this morning, and uh, Steve was well aware that if he was ever going to be in this game, it, it would have to be early, and uh, he the might have got a touching ball there. He's yeah, the red rock back. back yeah. See it rock backwards on the spot. He's had a couple of uh, touching balls. Oh, it is a this touch. Yeah. This so what happens a bit when you've got brand new cloths and, you know, you're putting the ball in the same spot yeah. all the time and it does get a bit of indentation on yeah. it. Yeah. If he's having a bit of a smile there, I think, as he spots up for this, this hazard. He hasn't had to play many, but he, no. he hasn't missed a long loser in a few he's played. And not easy when it gets damp. No. You can see he uh, knocked Steve's ball onto the red there. It's uh, a no-no off the respot. So he's in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Will he take on the big pot? Yeah, that, that, that cue ball's pretty close to the cushion. There's always a double kiss chance there. He's, uh, he's looking at the thinning off though. It's, it's a, might be a bit of exhibition. Oh, what's he doing here? He's looked at the crowd. Making sure he's playing a legal shot with mm. the referee inside the lines. Ah, oh. oh, fantastic. Yeah. Great shot. Yeah. Again, another, you know, at this level, these guys are still getting into trouble, but um, yeah. they find a way out of it. 
more often than not. So Matt, we're looking to bring that red into play pretty quick. She's done here. Obviously just concentrating on the red. He's over hit that a little. Can get enough room to screw off this or not? It's a tough Delicate shot. shot. Damn. Yeah. Balls. There you go. Yeah, it's the hard to it. Yep. Hitting yeah. down over that cushion there, it's uh, yeah. always it's difficult. People watching, you know, that's a tricky shot and the biggest hint I can give you is that you've got to have your back arm not too long uh, because you must get the bite into the ball. You always find the little screw shots, the in-offs, etc. It's always good to drop the back hand down the cue a little bit. Mm. It does help with touch. That's oh, a great, great shot, that's Steve. Fantastic shot. Fantastic shot. Hopefully that will give Steve a little bit of confidence to um, make a little break here and uh, you know, keep keep the game alive somewhat. It's it's a big margin, but uh, it'd be good to see Steve um, put in a good performance to finish the match off. Yeah. Over the years, you know, we've seen a lot of players that play Matthew in the final. If you know, they're, they're a good thousand points behind, and it's uh, it, it's it's hard to get up out of the chair and, and get some motivation to play some good billiards when you're sitting out for that long. But uh, Steve, being the, the professional he is, I'm sure he'll try and put in a big effort to finish the match off. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. He's a class fellow and a, and a class act uh, at both games. Steve, there's no doubt about that. So here are these pots the players are struggling with this morning. Um, just off the cushion here. He might be looking to leave it in off yellow after this pot. And then playing a drop cannon. Good shot. Very good shot. Yeah. So Steve will be playing an in off yellow here and uh, trying to leave the drop cannon and get back to the top pretty quick. You could play the soft too and also play another. I know you play the drop cannon. Will we see the um the the pace he can play at here, I'll get the feeling he's maybe going to start running. Yeah, yep. Which would be great to see. It would be. You know. So this is crucial here, what his result is, and he's, he's done well. See Steve, I don't know, have you noticed a little bit more movement in Steve's cue action this, this game? Yes, and I did in uh, Tasmania. Yeah, he's um, uh, definitely been riding the ball in the pockets on some of his pots. Yep, a bit of shoulder coming in. Yeah. And Matthew's guilty of it at times too. Is that a fatigue? Uh, I think it's been called human. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it can be a bit of fatigue too, for sure. But um, sometimes it's the big pressure shot that they're tending to do it on. Yeah. So. Here we are, Steve's starting to flow again now. This is the place he can play at. The Steve strut, we call it, when he gets going. He's, uh, he just gets around the table so quick. Beautiful move. Beautiful move. Yeah. There he is. Out of the jigger like a flash and uh, straight yeah. to the next shot. That's a, that's a good shot. Yeah. He pushed that too that's far, maybe. Still spot on. Yeah, it's hard to see the spot sometimes on the screen. Okay, so okay. he's he doesn't want this to go in. Ooh. See where he's riding it with his yeah. body a fair bit, yeah. You know? He knew he didn't quite hit that how he yeah. wanted to. It was a bad shot the shot before, you don't want to be leaving yeah. yourself in the draw of a pocket. If you get left there that's different, but at this level you don't want to put yourself there. It's been interesting to see the uh, number of covers the boys have had today with the uh, drop cannons. It's uh, that's a great shot. Yeah. Game, but he's been a bit stiff to land. Just awkward here. Yeah. He tends to play these thin cannons quite well. Too well. I put the commentator's curse on him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just guilty of it throughout the match. Mm. Looks like he's in, and then he's got himself out of position. Yeah. And he just can't do it against this bloke. 
Just give them about a walk up start yeah. regularly. I mean, uh, that's the other thing at, at this level. You get a walk up start, you're off and racing. Let's see if this comes out a bit. Okay. Yeah. So Matthew be using a touch of right hand side here, you'll see the ball calf, there we are, just to spread the ball towards the red. So if I hit that a touch, you still got the enough red. It's so important to concentrate on where that red ball goes on the drop cannons. Yeah, absolutely. Now it's just keep simple. Gee, that ball. Yeah, that angle of that. Keep it simple. Uh, philosophy here. Yeah. That red sort of came off the cushion with a bit of angle on it. Pushed it in a bit closer than he yeah. wanted. Yeah. Yeah, he struck it well. Almost too well. That's a good angle. Give me a plain ball shot here. No. no he's tried to stun it at the full oh, angle. Oh, look at this. Don't look now. Uh, Gee, wouldn't we like some of his luck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a shocker. He's shaking his head. Yeah, look, it's a funny game, Billy. It's... it's uh, but when they're not running for you, it's uh, they don't run for you. And it, it, you can fluke one, but yeah. it's not always to your benefit, or you don't get a lead. But he, <laughs> goodness me, that was a shocker because he's just got the perfect leave out of it. Now he's left himself on the cushion as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a funny game, Billy. There's not many sports in the world where you, as a as a competitor, you, you, you don't have an outcome on, on what the person's doing at the table mm. in, in terms of billiards. And you, know, you have to sit there for sometimes 40, 50 minutes and you know, return and, and play a, a shot after being sitting down for so long. There's, there's not many sports like it. Oh. Too right. The guy makes a 500 break on you yep. and uh, you get up and miss uh, your first shot back at the table. You could be sitting down for another hour. Mm. Uh, when he made his 8.31 in Ireland uh, against Phil Mumford, who's a lovely English billiard and snooker player. Yeah, very and, fast and a, player. And a great guy. Yeah. And uh, uh, 8.31, and Phil got up and made 250 first shot. And I yep. said, that's nearly as good as the 8.31. Yeah, and, and, and Phil is a very smooth player around the table to watch. He's uh, Absolutely. a great potter. Good snooker player in his, in his day, apparently. Now see if he can screw this back in these conditions. Yeah. yeah. Seem to have a bit more stum on that shot there than, yeah. than what they'd be usually playing with. Which is where it's tricky, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it I've is. got to give it a bit more, but yeah. how much? Yeah. I was just commenting there, I was, I was outside uh, you know, while we had Mr Cosgrove in commentary. Uh, Kim's refereeing has been spot on today. She's in the right spot. She's uh, fantastic at top. She does not move at all. Absolutely. Always aware of what the players need at the table. And yep. um, I don't think she's made many mistakes in this final. She's been on her feet for nearly six hours and she's done a fantastic job. Too right. And full credit to her for uh, wanting to referee billiards as well as snooker because mm. she's done very well with the snooker refereeing in the professional snooker tournaments and that and um, you know we're always desperate as we've found out yeah. uh, in this event the players have been magnificent I think there's a great thing about the beauty players we've all stepped up and yeah. done our fair share to help yeah. these referees out and um, good on Kim yeah there's yeah, been a few uh, a few referees that put oh. the hours in that's a bad miss yeah, trying to push it a bit harder to get the ball right down over the middle. And this is what happens here. You've got to hit them harder when it gets a bit slower. And things can go wrong. It's worked out all right, I think. Yeah. Oh, it's kept going. 
Oh, a little bit tricky here. He's probably going to play the cushion cannon. Yeah. Oh, he's going to yeah, force him off. Red, off. tricky in these conditions. Yeah, very dangerous. This is the right shot. The cannon yeah. off the back cushion. Bring the yellow down towards the spot and come up behind the red. Yeah. If he gets red anything but full ball, he should get yeah. a good leave That's on it. That's my spread a bit. No, he's fine. He's just hit the red bit fuller than he'd hoped. We may see the uh, famous Steve Mifford screw back. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> this is a shot that he's uh, well known for, Steve. He play these shots a lot. He's close to the cue ball there with his shirt. Yes, I think he's played this a lovely way. Yeah, he, yeah he's great very shot. good at those shots. Great shot. Steve's up the pace a little bit again. He's uh, starting to strut it around the table. Well, he hasn't got a choice. No, that clock all. keeps ticking down, and his only chance is to get some rhythm going. Yeah. And that's what he's lacked the yep. whole match. Yep. Again, he's just... Uh, he's got a shot, but it's just awkward. Yeah. Yeah, it's just squeezed it in. Well done. Yeah, they're tough shots. Uh, when you're close to the red, in these conditions, they... They can bite and um, go 90 degrees. He's played it well. Yeah. So Matthew's ball is in an awkward position. It's tied up in the cushion and uh, outside the natural sort of area you'd, you'd like it to be in. Yeah, I've seen um, Geet City, the great Geet City, he could work that ball along and that was hard up. Yeah. This double little double kiss double on the cannon aside, and just yeah. move it and move it and move it. Yeah, Geek said he was the godfather of the postman's knock. That's what oh, sure sure he's unbelievable. Amazing. And the players discovered the um, flexibility of the floating white and uh, how much tolerance you do have as opposed to the postman knock technique and hence bigger breaks started to be made by many more players. Absolutely. There was even a, an era where, you know, it was considered you always kept the white right behind the... Oh, a lot of shoulder movement yeah, there. Yeah, he's, he's been doing a lot, as he? He's trying to ride the ball into yeah. pocket. I, uh, I think I'll just about call it about here. Uh, I can't see Steve um, making a 500-plus break no. and get back in the match. Not the way he's queuing and It's just not going right for him today. No. Uh, he's, no. he's played great all tournament and um, I take my hat off to him because he he thoroughly went into this final believing he'd give Matthew a big big match and yeah. uh, you've got to have that belief and I know he's trained very hard for this so mm. yeah uh, it'll be a pleasure to have a drink with him afterwards he was a great great last night Steve organising him and that's the comradeship with the Billy players these guys are playing each other today last night they were out with a big crowd of us for dinner yeah. together and uh, they're very, very good mates, which is great. Yeah, Steve organised the dinner for it was about 15 of us. Um, we all enjoyed the good company for the night and uh, we uh, took Paul out, Paul Cosgriff out for dinner, yep. the tournament director who's done a fantastic job, not just this tournament, but the whole, the whole week or two weeks of uh, snooker and billiards, um, early starts, late finishes. Oh, yeah. Talk about professional people. Mm. Paul's just been amazing. Watch Matty playing the pot here. That's that uh, snooker practice coming into play there. Mm. Yes, it's a thankless task. Um, we wouldn't have tournaments without all these great workers yeah. behind the scenes. And um, just say, take my hat off to them all. Yeah, there's a lot of people behind the scenes, obviously. On the um, ABSC as well, Adam Wyatt, Frank Jones. Yeah. And we've got guys like Jason Colebrook who update the rankings, etc., and keep a log of all the, the scores and records. There's a lot of people that do a lot of things behind the scenes. They're right. And um, Victoria in uh, particular, so there's been guys around that have been playing for decades now that are still in there, the David Pitts of the world and that. And they're contributing greatly mm. with keeping stats and everything. We're all very yeah. important part of the history yeah. of the game. Maddie's looking like he's in his home paddock right now, and he'll be starting to feel that number 16 title is just about here. Yeah. 
It's looking good. He's got that look about him, hasn't he? He's, he uh, has. I think he's uh, locked in. He'll be desperately trying to make a big break yeah. for everyone now. He, kno he knows that um, he probably it's impossible to lose the match with the yeah. amount of time left. So he, he'll be out to try and play out for half an hour and get a big break for everyone. Mm. Oh, he's hit that a bit too hard, is he or not? Oh no, he's okay. Yeah, a little bit thin. Clipping the side of the bike ball here. There we are. Yeah. Gonna play the roof. Oh no, he's playing that. Where'd the red go? Ah. In the pocket. There we are. That's what extreme markers That's not there. a shot That's he would a, play yeah. if there was 10 the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Getting up there, getting the queue up. Uh, we had a bit of a joke last night. Matthew, Matthew had to play a, a Massey shot yesterday, and uh, only being five foot two, Matthew struggles to, <laughs> to get the queue up in the air. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, there wasn't a lot of hope on breeding. My wife's shorter than I am. That's saying something. I could get into trouble for saying that. Matter of fact, uh, there was a bit of a joke yesterday. I didn't realise table six is—is is it table six that's a bit lower, or is it the? Yeah, it's this corner table. Oh, is it? Okay. It, it, it's a couple inches lower. And that's what I've played on it four times. And yeah. I said, well, that's because of your height. That's yeah, doing yeah. you a favour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's tapped up to 62 here. He still hasn't got them under control, no. but. Uh, I think it's more about uh, just staying on the table and might see a few exhibition shots for him. Yeah, he's, he's, one he's there, starting to uh, trying to bring the white open back. the arm up a bit. So what's the plan for Matthew for the rest of the year, Neil? He's, uh, he's obviously got the his second year of the uh, professional ticket to uh, go on his snooker. What's yeah, well he'll be um, heading off for... Uh, three qualifiers in August, yep. in mid-August, and it's good that they're all played back to back, so he's only away, or ten days of tournament, plus he'll go over a bit early to yep. acclimatise, and um, then he's off to Germany to play in the Paul Hunter Classic over there, and um, then you will see where he's at after that. I think he's got the West Coast um, snooker tournament in Perth in a couple of weeks, that's a very big event, and uh, Steve's coming over to play oh, in excellent. it. Excellent. So that's really good. So yeah, um, it does. You know, it's a very busy time for him. That's for sure. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing he's learned a fair bit uh, with the first year of his uh, pro ticket. There's uh, a lot of lessons to be learnt. Mm. Uh, obviously, a different class of players, different conditions, and having to travel uh, from Perth to, to the UK, etc., is, is a big ask for anyone. Oh, definitely. Um, when he went over to the World Championships, he couldn't make his mind up how early he wanted to go. He didn't want to go too early and be away from his family yeah. and that. And um, he had intended going a good 10 days before, and he changed that because he thought, well, you know, um, I'd rather be at home and then I can still practice on a star table. Yeah. And um, then after the event, he said to me, you know, I made the mistake of my life going over two days before I was playing. Yeah. Just the time difference alone. Yeah. His second session, he had to play uh, at equivalent 2 a.m. in the morning, and as he said, he only had himself to blame. He just made a, an inexperienced decision. Yeah. And to compete with these guys, uh, you, you've got to have all your stars aligned. You've got to feel fresh and focused and hungry. So, yeah, learning curve for him. Yeah. Matthew started this break there with a really nice uh, short journey. He's uh, spread the balls a bit there, but he's, he's starting to, to flow, Matthew. Yeah. He's just cruising at the yeah. moment. He's got another long cannon here. He's going to play off the bottom roll. Yeah, it's uh, up to 87 already. Yes. Hello, I feel good. Oh, yes. I don't get any easier. 
No. I always say the first sign of a table slowing is balls uh, just don't come back out off the yep. cushions, and we're seeing it. Might try a bit of a run through and off. Yep. He's going to the case. There's the extension. Thank God they invented those. The one game I played here the other day, everybody was laughing because every second shot I was using the extension or the rest or the long rest. I said it was controlled. Yeah, you have to play towards your strengths now. You? <laughs> That's a good shot. That's a good shot. Yeah. I'm going to get the red out. Now. We're going to see a short journey. Another or short a journey. Long pot in the red here. One or the other. So this is a short journey we're talking about. These are uh, little losing hazards played into the centre pocket. So Matthew will be hitting just below centre on the left hand side. You'll see the cue ball spin towards the centre pocket. Uh, you yeah. see the, heavy, the heavy spin applied to the ball there. Yeah, we'll probably see him at top here, drop this down to the top cushion for yep. the uh, drop cannon and away he goes again in 94. Yep. And really put it beyond reach of Steve now. Let's see what Matt can do in the last half hour here. Plenty of time for 500 now. Well, that's right. He, he'll be trying to get one for everybody. Uh, I know, Matty, he'll be, he'll be disappointed that he hasn't, you know. Yeah. Number one priority is to win the, win the title again, but number two, he loves to make a break for everyone. Yeah. And they, they the billiard lovers, they almost, you know, they expect that, don't they? Albert? They expect it, but the, the knowledgeable ones who understand the conditions and, and you know, what we're playing on it, it's, it's tough when it's, it's, it's damp and, um, you know, it's, it's uh, I think a 400 is a commendable break considering. Mm. And also his lack of preparation as well for billiards. So. Yeah, he was certainly rusty early on yeah. in this comp. Um, and it was interesting, like we had seriously 20 minutes on the start at home and he said, put the billiard balls away, Dad, I'm not going to practice on this. Yeah. He said, that's not what I'm playing on over there. I'll, I'll just get yeah. into form when I get there. And exactly, it's taken yeah. longer than normal. But he's peaked at the right time. Yeah. Maybe see he peaked a bit early. But who knows? But uh, you do peak. I'm a firm mm. believer in that. Yeah, it's interesting watching Steve. He doesn't slow down on any matches. When he's got a sizable lead, he, uh, he still runs around a table. He, he's not one for conserving energy. Oh, I noticed that with his quarterfinal match. and. Uh, his semi-final match with David Collins yesterday. Absolutely. Um, one of our key words is staying fresh, you know. Yeah. I'm yeah. always uh, make, trying to make sure he's as fresh as he can and just mm. about demanding him to get out of the building when he sits and watches other players because Matty loves to watch everybody yep. and uh, he loves to help them. And um, sometimes I have to say, come on, let's get out of here, give your eyes a rest. You know? I mean, the greatest players, Bob Marshall was a classic. He used to always have a snooze and put uh, two tea bags on his eyes. I reckon that used to help his eyes. So, you know, warm tea bags and they have a really good rest because if you lose your eyes in there, and it's happened to Matt, um, I remember in Singapore years ago, he got a sty on his eye before the semi-final against City and really it was just um, fatigue yep, that yep. brought it on. Yeah. And the other day here he said that um, his contact lenses were drying out mm. with the air conditioning so he went and got some drops and uh, he hasn't rubbed his eyes once in this match. Yeah, I've seen the bottle sitting next to him on, on all his mm. matches um, if required. Well, he's flowing now. This is yeah. this is the uh, real map go along here. Yeah, the tea bag one's an interesting one now. It's um, yeah. something I sort of employ for my youthful looks. Every night I put the tea bags on and there you go. I use them in the morning. They have a nice cup of tea. <laughs> mm. Matt's definitely enjoying this now. You can see the look on his face. He's oh yes, yeah. just uh, cruising. He's actually snuck out uh, yeah. both uh, yesterday and today and bought one of these very healthy juices. Yes. Um, I don't know, I Dave, Dave Collins has put him onto that, I believe. Yeah. He's, 
yeah, there's a nice little place in uh, Yarraville Village that um, sells all the health stuff. I've been there myself and had some uh, nice breakfast there. It's a really uh, nice part of Melbourne, Yarraville. It's a great little yeah, village. absolutely. Nice and quiet away from the city. And the Yarraville Club has um, been fantastic to us. Yeah. And all the time we've been here, the staff, fantastically yeah. friendly people. Uh, lovely meals here and um, it's been really great to come back and uh, go back to the club. I'm sure there'll be a few beverages consumed tonight at the club, celebrational drinks. Uh, you might have one or three tonight. Yeah. I know who'll be buying them, won't be me. <laughs> I might get some board out of him at last, you never know. No. I doubt it or electricity, money. Help pay my bill. Um, I tell you what, Matt cannot speak highly of you, more highly of you than if the, uh, the effort you're putting uh, supporting his uh, snooker career the last couple of years, especially uh, with the star table and, and whatever else you've done, he's, he's uh, definitely made it known what you've done for him. Ah, oh, look, you know, you do these things if you can, and um, I uh, would have loved to have gone over with him every game, but you just can't do it all. Yep. As you know, you came to England with us that year. Well, we've had some fantastic times, and mm. uh, we've been to some great places. And uh, you count your lucky stars, don't you, that yep. you're even on the planet. We, we've had some great friends, as you know, in mm. this bit of family that are no longer with us, and uh, you do it while you can. Yeah, I've really missed the last three years not being able to play yeah. and, uh, and come and watch it. I'm always scared I might miss him make his first thousand break. You know? <laughs> and last year when he got that 800, I thought, yeah. oh, I'm not there. Yeah. I wasn't barracking for him to miss, but close to it. <laughs> well, you're, you're safe again this year too, so. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm not leaving the planet till I see yeah. it. He's, he's determined to do it. Yeah. Well, he's up to 195 while we're having a chat here. and. Uh, as I say, he's got 25 minutes left yet. Um, yeah, he's got a chance of he'll be He'll be really saying, come on, do this for the crowd. That's got a beautiful now. Yeah, 200. All right, Matt. Once you start just walking up, taking one feather and playing the shot, you know he's in the groove and that's what's happening now. Yeah. So 203. We're, um, Good to see a sizable break to completion of the match and still going. Yep, absolutely. There was a bit of a uh, little challenge going on yesterday. Steve was making his 300 and Matt was just running a bit behind him. And, yeah, uh, I did see that. And I'm sure Matt had it in the back of yeah. his mind. Uh, well, I don't want Steve to get the highest break here. And yeah, I, I did see that little sequence of events yesterday. <laughs> it was quite, quite funny to watch. Very healthy competitiveness. Yeah. You do tend to notice that a bit, you know, um, in the world titles especially, the likes of Gilchrist and uh, the others, they, they do always have a look to see what everyone else is up to, especially in early parts of the uh, tournaments when you know, they've got no pressure on them and they're, they're playing against the mugs like us now. Yes, yeah. Most well, definitely. 221. 221. Keep going well. He's still going well. Just got them in close together here. Just want to feather past the wall. Okay, he's done it the other way. Just enjoying this break here. You see the determination on Matt's face. Yeah. They're tricky pot reds. And again, Kim's refereeing up here. This is an important part of the break as anything because the referee's got to flow with the pace of the player and she's done it beautifully for Matt. Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely always in the right position at top of the table, uh, not moving on the shot. And that's what you want from a referee. Uh, you don't want to be thinking about referees moving around you. 
you mentioned the Paul Hunter Classic in Germany. I'll, I believe Kim's heading over for that too. I think it's uh, on her calendar every year. Okay. Um, fantastic event last year. Gee, the German people are into their snooker. The crowd were fantastic uh, over there. Uh, just amazing. And um, they really know the etiquette of the game over there. Yeah. I've heard the venue's really, really good over there too. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. The arena that they play yeah. the final in is magnificent. Matty, just working his way back to the top there. Yeah, the red uh, obviously got placed in the pyramid spot there with the red spot yeah. occupied. Uh, back to top pretty quick. And we're up to 248. This is a great finish by Matt. Um, obviously considering the conditions, they, they were both struggling. I'm sure Matt's uh, happy to finish off this match with a, a sizable break such as this. Oh yeah, he'll be... This is, um, you know, as I say, Matt appreciates these people watching him and he, he knows how much it means to them to... You know, they, they admire him. And as I say, last year they saw an 800 break, so they're all barracking for it, Pat. Yeah. He plays out 20 minutes here. You know, he's, he's going to get 500 plus. Yeah. Not that I'm barracking for him. Grand or biased at all, but poor old <laughs> Steve's out of the match now, so let's barrack for a 500. Why not? Big way to finish the match with the uh, tournament's highest break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now the old man will get the blow. So the current highest break for Tormund is 467 by Matthew. Uh, Steve Missett has made a 305. It's been a good spread of 100 breaks this year. Uh, interesting to note the uh, four semi finalists hold the top four spots in the highest breaks Matthew, Steve Missett, David Collins, and David Cosgrove. Yes, look, and great to see. That's how it should be at the end of the day. Yeah. And, uh, Really fantastic to see um, the youthful David Collins knock in 186 because the last time that uh, I actually had the pleasure of playing David, he couldn't knock in an 86, let alone 186. So it's fantastic that Dave got to the last four yeah. this year and he had a few uh, uh, challenges yesterday to get here and uh, <laughs> he got here. But, yes. um, Good on him, he walked in and put it all behind him and uh, he played some very good cricket. That was unfortunate for me, I, I was a person that uh, Dave drew in the quarter final, he had some uh, issues getting to the club and uh, sure enough walked in and uh, put me to sleep, he absolutely hammered me. And, he uh, took it out on you. He took it out on me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he played a great match with Steve Miffsard, oh, he fantastic. was in it right, right to the end and um, so there was only 50 in it at one stage. Yeah. So uh, it was a great effort, and he won't admit it, but he's not getting any younger either. So fantastic that he's still playing that well. Not quite where he used to play, but he, um, he's still a, always a huge danger. And we're over the three now at 3.05. And flying. Kim's earning her um, wages well and truly here at the top. There's m more pressure on her than there is on him. Trust me, he'll tell her if she calls the wrong score. Yeah, look, uh, six hours on your feet, refereeing billiards, it's uh, no mean feat. It's, she's done well. And um, obviously a lot of that involves the two top pockets back and forth. I struggle after two hours, so um, she's doing great. Yeah. Well, I think Matthew should buy her a drink too tonight. I'm sure he will. Anywhere, anyone else we can get him while we're there? Yeah. Yeah, the queue came up there. He's yeah. Uh, Okay, didn't still get on there. 
So that continues the top here. I might hand over to um, got Jason Colebrook, uh, about to join commentary for the first time, I believe. Okay. And uh, might let Neil go outside and enjoy the last 15 minutes of the match and uh, soak, in, that, soak in the atmosphere. Yep. Thanks very much, Neil, for our uh, contributions today for the commentary. Um, we'll now hand over to Jason Colebrook and Peter Tankard. Yeah. Great, Grant, and look, thanks to everyone for having me on here. I've really appreciated to get to talk about the boy. Um, obviously, very proudly. And, um, you know, may everyone that's uh, watching this, um, you could be watching uh, probably, arguably, the second greatest uh, if, or third greatest player Australia's ever produced in the game. So um, it's been great. Thanks a lot for having us, fellas. Cheers. minutes left. Thank you Grant, thank you Neil. Um, joined in commentary with by Jason Colebrook who is the Grand Pooh Bar of Billiards Australia and it would be fair to say the main driver in uh, the resurgence of interest in billiards within Australia. Uh, Thanks Peter, you're Jackson? very kind. It's been great, it's been a, a fantastic event. Everything's run very smoothly. You must be exhausted. I am tired. I played in Singapore before this event. Um, there's always a lot of organising at, at least six weeks out from the event where every day there's a mound of paperwork to do. There's a lot of people doing it, but it's a, it's a lot more in putting one of these events together than um, just waiting till entries close and doing the draw. Mm. So, uh, but there's a good team of guys. Matthew's just cruising here. A little bit of swerve there, didn't quite get the uh, throw he wanted. Uh, you can't really see with the camera angle, we've got quite a few spectators in the room. We've got uh, three of the most loyal supporters of billiards you could possibly have in Victoria in uh, Mac Rinkowitz, Ian Gilby and Mike Wallen. I don't think those three guys have missed a final at state or national level for about 20 years and they're in the room. Uh, Ron Steckham is in the room. Ron's well into his 90s. He was uh, president of the VBSA somewhere in the middle of the last century. <laughs> but he enjoys his billiards. There's a real uh, crew of enthusiasts in there. I, I guess that's the right word for billiards players and their enthusiasts. And um, it's, it's not a game that suits everyone. It's, uh, Hard to understand, um, hard to learn, uh, and at this level, it looks impossibly easy. But it's this is this is where art conceals art. Exactly, uh, this is so good that he's making this look easy. It's impossibly difficult, but he's making it look dead easy. And uh, absolutely perfect top of the table is only about four shots, but when the walls are just slightly out of perfect, there's about another 200 variations. Mm and it, it takes you forever to learn them. You can't just uh, have a couple of lessons and learn top of the table. It's hours and hours and hours of practice. Closing in on 400 now. People don't say it enough, Jason, but uh, on behalf of all the players, thank you for all the things that you do and all the leadership you've shown on in, uh, in the sport, and it's just been a tremendous thing to be involved with. Oh, grey is that one. Thanks, Peter. I appreciate that. It is, um, the players are appreciative of all the work that goes in by all the administrators, and uh, occasionally I play in a tournament, I have a bad tournament personally, get a bit frustrated with the amount of admin, but the appreciation shows by the players afterwards makes up for it That's every 400. time. That's 400. 402 still going. Yep, so it's certainly the high break of the match and he's now closing in on the tournament high break which I think is 467, is that right? Yes. I'm uh, going to hand over shortly 
having said my thanks to Jason, to one of our semi-finalists and an expert commentator, Dave Collins, who is standing with us. Uh, Dave was ran Steve Mifson very close in the other semi-final. And uh, I guess the question to Dave is, could you have made a better fist of it? We'll find out when he <laughs> when he takes on the microphone. Uh, the previous is. commentators made a few nice comments about Kim, I bet. Kim has done a great job this final. Uh, Kim has never played billiards, and she's only been refereeing billiards about four or five years. Um, she has improved. Oh, she wants that to pull up. She's improved uh, greatly. She does put a lot of work into her refereeing, but it, it, it's a very hard game to referee <coughs> if you don't play it. And so Kim's had to um, start from absolute scratch in becoming a billiards referee. How are you, David? Yes, good, thanks, Jason. It's uh, nice to be here for the finale here. And uh, you're right about the refereeing. It's, um, it's not just playing the game that makes it hard. It's even when you play the game, you know it's hard. You've got to concentrate very hard to make sure you get everything right. So it's, uh, I don't know any... Any, I've never had a session in uh, billiards that the referee has not made a mistake. That's right. I cannot me remember that, so that's how hard it is. And I'm so, sure yeah. Matthew won't mind us saying that he's a he's a hard taskmaster on the referees. If the referee makes a mistake, Matthew will let them know it. <laughs> so yeah, for um, sure. yes. Kim Kim's done a great job with this. It's yes, very well. hard counting through the hundreds and not making a mistake. Yes, Matthew is a ta hard taskmaster. He's he's got to look after himself and he's. He's a beards purist and he, he has, doesn't, doesn't like to make a mistake with his queuing or on the shot selection or anything like that. So that's why he's such a good player. But it takes, as you know, it takes two players to make a final. And Steve was, uh, I'm sure Steve thought he was up for this uh, final. And I certainly give him an outside chance to maybe even, even beat Matthew there because Matthew wasn't playing that well early in the tournament and Steve was playing okay. I but agree with you. The, in the last, Steve's played a lot of billiards in the last few weeks and he's been making lots of 200 breaks and Matthew's practised almost no billiards this year so I, I thought Steve was a chance to um, cause an upset or at least run him close this year. Yes, I, I'm, sh I'm sure in the, in the future, in the next few years, they'll have many more matches, possibly uh, might even dominate the playing in the final with each other, I think, in the next few years. I don't know if anyone else, you can see Jason, that could possibly no. challenge him. And uh, Steve's more or less on the improve a little bit, so I'm sure he can do a lot better. Well, Steve's and, uh, in his early 40s and Matthew's in his late 30s, and uh, Billiards players, they're still in their prime in their early 50s. As these guys have got years and years of top play ahead of them. Yes, as with the game, it's comparing snooker to billiards. The snooker player, his life isn't as... Um, long as a beards player. It's beards, you learn your angles and that and you can develop it later in life and uh, whereas snookers mainly if you can't, if you're not potting balls, uh, well, it's the end of you really as far as uh, being able to play at a very high standard. That's right, yeah. Peter Gilchrist turned 50 in, uh, when he was actually in Adelaide in Australia this year. He's still playing as good as ever. Uh, Mike Russell uh, has either just turned 50 or just about to. And those guys will be a force for another 10 years, I would think. Well, correct, that's for sure. And uh, you've only got to go back to a decade or two ago when you, there was a great Bob Marshall, three times world champion, who uh, made a comeback at 76 years of age. Matthew's now on 482. And won the Australian title after retiring for 10 years. That was extraordinary. There's no other sport where that will happen. That's what, what is the fantastic thing about this sport is a guy at 76 can make a comeback, win an Australian Championship, run up in the World Championship. There's just, uh, I don't think even in the more cere cerebral sports like chess you'll ever see that happen. Yeah, well, it's, it's just phenomenal fantastic. really because he, he ended up making the world title final as well and he knocked out some great players. We went to India and in the Indian papers they said Marshall's come back to defend, to win his world title back which is quite amusing, but everyone thought he was too old and he put up a good show in the final, but got overran. 497. 500 break coming up 499. here. 499. Fantastic. Well done. Well done. 
Let's hope he keeps this going and there's no accidents. One year I watched Matthew and he had a kick on 600 and another year in this event he miscued on 690. So let's not wish anything like that on him. Let's hope he plays out time. Yes, well, I'm sure Steve will be wishing him the best now because uh, he's probably got time to make about 6.50 I reckon. Uh, he's just checked the clock the here. as he walked around there. He just had a quick look at the clock. Yeah, nice 6.50 unfinished um, would be nice. Be a fantastic way to end what's been a great 11 days of billiards and snooker at the Yarraville Club. Yeah, it's been great. I've been seeing lots of players from overseas and different it styles. It has been and, fantastic. Uh, everyone's been very happy with the way the tables were played and the camaraderie among the billiard players is second to none. And for guys like you and me, Dave, who play at this club, members of this club, it's just fantastic to see a tournament here and the quality of the, the field. It certainly is. It would uh, be nice to get a few more spectators here. Uh, but we can always watch it on the cue ball TV, of course. So everyone's, yeah. everyone can, can uh, see this masterful player playing this game. Yeah, Dan does a great job from cue ball TV. I was talking to Rob and uh, Rob Hall and Gary Norman, both from the UK earlier, and they were watching the uh, the setup here and the streaming, and they said they've got nothing like this in England. When they televise the billiards event at Leeds, it's the professional setup from the uh, World Professional Billiards and Snooker Association who do the uh, streaming, and that's a cost of uh, many thousands of pounds. And uh, they have, well, they have a truckload of gear. Dan has two suitcases full of gear. <laughs> well, this is this is absolutely first class from what I from what I've seen, and I've I've only had heard of praise for Cubal TV and. It, Dan does a wonderful job and uh, we thank him very much. Closing in on 5.50 now. For anyone who hasn't been down here, this is 100 years old, this table they're playing on. If you see the state of the rails, we the rails had some cracking and we actually put new rails on this table about three years ago. New blocks, new rubbers, new rails. It's a blackwood table with cedar frame. Uh, hardwood, new hardwood rails, and Matthew regards this as the best table in Australia. Yeah, well, he wouldn't be far off it. It plays fantastic, and uh, it was good to see him. Both players happy to play on the on the here table that uh, you just mentioned. Five fifty-eight. Very fair pockets too on this table. They exactly match the template. All the pockets are the same. I think for billiards, these are the, are the perfect shape of pocket. I know in some parts of the world they like playing on the snooker tables, but I think this is perfect for billiards. I think so, you're right there. Perfect size pockets. And the ball doesn't square up on the rails like on the snooker tables. Some of the, um, the star tables and other tables, you get some very strange angles when you hit the ball into the cushions. Yes, well, Steve will be just disappointed how he played in the final. Uh, he'll take a lot out of this and he, he'll... Uh what did you think, David, about Steve showing emotion a couple of times? He very rarely does that. Very rarely, yeah. I've been surprised that he's shown emotion. But Steve's a very proud player and he, um, he's got a very high standard of play and when he's not producing, he needs to... Um, probably need to get release a bit of energy and as Matthew has been known to do... He does. Uh, gets a bit upset when he's not producing and sometimes you just lose a little bit of control and I can relate to that I've been warned for language by referees uh, venting my frustration <laughs> Steve very rarely shows anything twice uh, that I've seen during this tournament I think that's reflective of his high expectations this for this event that he's actually shown a bit of emotion yes He's too young to be becoming a grumpy old man, so I think it's just high expectations. Think, Closing yeah, think, in on 600. Yeah, I think Steve built himself up for this final because Matthew being such such a great player probably would have to be in the top five in the world, in my opinion. And, Definitely. Uh, he knows that uh, he's, 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 he's in the big contest and he'd just love to be able to produce in this match and sometimes he might have to go around the table here it's hard to tell from the camera angle yeah, he should be fine I 
like a very close to the corner. Still okay. Still five ninety. Still score. Four. Probably have to play a run through Cannon, or he may pay the cross loser. So he's going to have to go away from top here. Two minutes on the clock. He's five ninety six. If the billiard players have noticed where Matthew put the white ball there, he, it's, it's a good place to leave the white ball when you're going off the red. You can always fall back on that. And yeah, he's got a half ball loser from the D. So he's left himself another half ball loser off the red. If he had the time, he could have these back at top in a yes. few shots. You can just push the white ball back behind the spot and... Uh, come down here again but with only two minutes on the clock he'll be happy with around 620-630 I hope he does play out these couple of minutes it'll be great to see an unfinished break a big unfinished break the number of 600 breaks Matthew has made is just unbelievable when you look back through the record books he's I know, I know a lot of the other players aren't playing the long timed matches that uh, Matthew is but he's just made so many 600 plus breaks well, I can go back to uh, when I played him in the final in 2001, Jason, he made a 6.49. And uh, obviously he was in his uh, early 20s then, and which is very young for a billiards player. So that was, he's, he's actually disappointed he hasn't made a thousand yet. And uh, I have absolutely no doubt he will make a thousand break. Just a matter of time. A little tricky here. Nice run through. And he's on the cross loser line with the red having dropped. Couldn't go wrong. Still got the end off. A little oh. bit unlucky there. He's got a kiss. You know, either We're player. In the last minute now, so. Try and double this red up towards the middle, or you could hit this hard, do you think? A bit unlucky. I know Matthew's a hard man, but the normal shot would be to pot the white and double ball here, but I don't think he'll do that. <laughs> he knows there's only... No, he will do it. <laughs> Run a few hazards, maybe. There you go. He does want to play at time. So how many competitive years have you got left, do you reckon, Dave? You and I are... Uh, I'm a couple of years older than you. What's how many competitive years have you got left? Oh, well, he's missed. Six hundred and twenty-one. Fantastic break, Matthew. I don't really think you see one of the come back to the table with only seconds remaining. Left hand. The Steve is playing a left-handed shot just for. <laughs> Fantastic. Great match. Well, not a great match, but a great exhibition by Matthew Bolton. Very little practice this year. He spent all year on star tables. He spent all year. Um, uh, in fairness to him, he's spent all years being beaten by great players. Uh, he's come out here and he's really done himself credit. Very little practice and he's come good. And thank you to everybody who's come along to set the final 2018 Australian
we've been uh, extremely blessed this week to have the standard play that we've had from these players. Uh, it's been a marathon, and uh, I really am very appreciative of the commitment that people have to their sport and the manner in which they apply themselves and the manner in which they persevere through what we need to take. Uh, an Iron Man event. Um, could I just uh, firstly provide some checks to our losing quarter finalists? Uh, firstly, John Chen.
this week has been magnificent in terms of the support that we've had from everybody associated with the Australian Media Super Council, everybody associated with the Victorian Media Super Association, especially the, uh, the referees and the players who have speaking have done so much refereeing and done so much to help out the tournament director. Um, the tournament would not have been possible without the support that's been provided by so many people. Uh, I'm especially grateful to uh, Neil Brown and uh, Praveen Chandra, who not only did referee the semi-finals, but also came along and manned the scoreboard today, and Kim uh, I just performance in the finals. <laughs>
respect it deserves and you know put something on for you people and that, that's what motivates me all the people the Ian Gilby's the Brian Waldo's um, the Frank Humphreys the Henry Check all these guys that come back every year that just sit and want to watch the best billiards and that's what motivates me to play well is to have your eyes looking at me so thank you very much to you all This year has been really hard with the snooker, the professional snooker. And I haven't played with this for 12 months. I had a lot of negative thoughts this week. And then I saw Steve's uh, engine starting to roll yesterday in the semis. So I was a little bit worried about what might happen today. But uh, that's always ahead. So tell me how good I am and what I need to focus on. And uh, this trophy means a lot to me and my family. Thanks very much. The, um, the highlight of the week for me has been uh, when uh, the people who were involved, uh, the Dunhams and etc., uh, talked with Kim and we took the photo of the Patterson's Hunters. Gemstool, gemstool. Fig jam, fig and ginger. Whoa. Lemon butter. It's champagne snow, though. Eh? Yeah? Yeah. What's that mean? Skier speak. Oh. You wouldn't know. Sorry, Mr. Skier. Why ski? Yeah? Well, you any good? I've watched people do it. Let's talk about a more prosperous tomorrow. A tomorrow where your finances, property investments, property management, accounting, and financial planning are looked after in an exceptional capacity, all under the same roof. A tomorrow that works at your pace, where there's no overt pressure to make investment and financial decisions. A tomorrow where these processes are seamless where someone is always there to support your financial and investment needs. At Reventon, our company's values are what ensure we remain distinctive to our customers. Integrity. Passion. Quality. Leadership. Customer experience. When hiring Leventon, you are hiring a team of professionals to support you in your investment and financial decisions. Whether you have been with us since 2005, or you're looking to purchase your first investment property, your future is Reventon's future. So, let's talk about a more prosperous tomorrow, today.